Star Wars. An epic movie series that has lasted the test of time and is still a huge player in the movie and game industry today. Every single console seems to have its own definitive Star Wars title, like Super Star Wars on the SNES, or the Pod Racer game on N64, or Shadows of the Empire on N64, even the Atari 2600, if you want to go way back, has its own Star Wars games. In fact, it has four or five of them. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Star Wars Battlefront. While this is the PC version, it was the first game I owned for PlayStation 2, and I loved it back in the day. But the big question is, does it hold up 12 years later? Let's take a look. Okay, we gotta grab all of your stuff here, we gotta put it in the Nintendo. Wait, it's disc system. Put it in this Nintendo. Okay. Star Wars Battlefront was made by LucasArts and Pandemic Studios. Rest in peace, you magnificent bastards. And this is one of those games that uses a profile system to keep track of your stuff. Which seemed kind of weird for an FPS game, but I guess Call of Duty and Battlefield have kind of made this the norm in this day and age. The game has multiplayer as well, however the PC port and of course the PlayStation 2 port are completely dead, despite the PC port being picked up by Game Ranger when GameSpy went down. There are four main game modes, which includes two story modes and two freestyle modes. Both story modes are pretty well exactly the same in playstyle, but of course, they take place in two different trilogies. You have one game mode, which would be a mix of domination and team deathmatch. There's a counter at the top which shows your troop numbers and enemy troop numbers. If you have less than three bases, you lose troops faster, and if you have no bases, you lose in 30 seconds. Unless another base, of course, is captured. Whoever reaches zero troops first loses, and this is generally how the game is won or lost, because taking all of the bases and keeping it for 30 seconds is nearly impossible while they still have troop numbers. The story mode follows the movies fairly well in both trilogies, and includes small clips from the movie in half-decent quality, and it really helps move it along and know where the story is in relative to the missions. The other two modes differ greatly. Galactic Conquest has a planetary system to choose to attack. The red planets are enemy controlled, the green planets are controlled by you, and the white is generally 50-50. Most planets have two maps to fight through, although there's usually at least one per conquest that only has the one, which is usually either Endor, Hoth, or Geonosis. Once you do so, it becomes yours if you win. And once you control all the planets, you win the mode. Each planet also has a bonus that you can use once you fully control it. This includes health regen, unlimited ammo, Jedi heroes, and even extra troops. Your enemy also chooses a power-up, making it a lot more challenging to play. Again, though, unfortunately, the gameplay is the same domination, team deathmatch style of FPS, which really hinders gameplay experience, because there's no other game modes to play. It could have really done well with, say, Capture the Flag, regular team deathmatch, or other such modes, like Search and Destroy, even, with maybe a command vehicle of some sort. Even a Juggernaut mode could have been put in. Unfortunately, though, Battlefront 1 falls flat on this aspect, as it only has the one game mode throughout the entire game. The instant action is the one I seem to play most often. It gives you a choice of all the maps in-game, along with most maps having Galactic Civil War or the Clone Wars options. There are a few maps that don't, however, like the iconic battles of Hoth and Geonosis being their respective trilogies. Once you've chosen your maps, you can click Play in Order or the Play Random button and launch. The Random option does exactly what you expect, randomizing the list of maps you have chosen previously. All in all, is Battlefront still as good as I remember it? Unfortunately not. But it's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, and it's still one of the best Star Wars games out there, in my own opinion. You can form whatever opinion you want otherwise. But it does lack in some aspects. One of them I had mentioned before, which was the gameplay. There's only one game mode, which is the Domination TDM style of play. I would probably lead more to Domination, but even still, there's no Capture the Flag, there's no Juggernaut or anything like that to switch it up a little bit. And it does get kind of boring and monotonous after a while, especially playing the same maps over and over again. There is also no Jedi play in this game either, which is something that I really would have wanted out of a Star Wars game, especially a Star Wars game like this one, where you're having 16-on-16 16 16 battles and stuff. You just want to play as a Jedi, block all the shots, and just be the leader of the game, but unfortunately, the Jedis only appear in Galactic Conquest modes as a power-up and a couple of story missions, and that's it. You don't even get to play as them either. You're stuck as a, a droid or as a stormtrooper or a rebel. You can't play as them. It's really disappointing. Battlefront 2 does fix this, and it also fixes one other thing. Running. There is no running in Battlefront 1. And it really, really sucks, because the maps are very, very big, and you just want to run. Especially if you miss that tank, or the tank you want to get in gets blown up or taken over by an enemy unit. You just want to run, and it really, really sucks. But it does stand the test of time, both gameplay-wise, addiction-wise, and graphics-wise. A lot of PlayStation 2 games now are 
while kind of melting into the pot of hell that a lot of N64 games have done, such as the Castlevania series and Mega Man Legends, of course, in my own opinion. The graphics and stuff are very blocky and hard to really focus on, and they're really not appealing. However, Battlefront 1 has actually stood the test of time in this aspect, and that is a damn, damn good thing. Maybe next time I'll review Battlefront 2 and we can see what's good and what's bad about that game. But, for now, thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Hey, enjoyed that video? Check out the links on the screen to check out some of my other videos, like Let's Get Flashy or my top five games of all time. And of course, if you want to, you can click that button down below and subscribe to my channel. I'd be really damn happy if you did, because I want to pass Nitro Rat, god fucking damn it.